everyone welcome back to aircraft design course module 8 landing gear sizing another aircraft's major components after wing fuselage and tail plane of the aircraft so this video will give you the clear idea for the following questions what are the significance of landing gear and its geometry parameters how it varies over aircraft to aircraft importance of ground clearance and how selection of tires and shock absorber play a key role in aircraft design so stay tuned till the end of the lecture to learn and implement in your design of landing gear sizing so before starting to any prime design the first and foremost is to collect the following data okay so here i have collected the data for my aircraft that is large passenger aircraft for 440 passenger aircraft uh, first of all, landing gear helps to keep the aircraft stable on the ground during loading, unloading and taxiing. It also facilitates the takeoff by allowing aircraft acceleration and rotation with the lowest friction and absorb the landing shock during landing operation. So, landing gear parameters which strongly impacts the aircraft aerodynamics configurations. Now, basically landing gear divided into two sections, one in the main landing gear and the secondary either in the nose or the tail. So, another special aspect of landing gear is to decide what to do with it after the takeoff operation. Basically, there are four alternatives. Mm -hmm. The landing gear is released after takeoff landing gear hangs underneath the aircraft the landing gear is fully retracted inside the aircraft or the landing gear is partially retracted inside the aircraft so as you know when we are using for high speed aircraft mostly we prefer to keep the landing gear fully retracted inside the aircraft because that will help to reduce the drag of an aircraft now considering the design requirement your stability and performance and other operational conditions of landing configuration can be classified as single main bicycle tail gear, tricycle, quadricycle, multi bogey, releasable rail, skid and the floaters. Floaters as you know are used in the seaplane. Now the single main gear is not usually retracted that means it is a fixed one so it is very short in height. Mainly it have two advantages in this arrangements. First of all it is very simple. And due to the simplicity, it creates a low weight of the landing gear. But on the other hand, it creates an disadvantages is the longer takeoff run. So since the takeoff run is limited. So coming to the next is that bicycle. Bicycle by the name itself, you can say it has a two main gears and one aft and one forward of the aircraft center of gravity but here both the wheels are having of same size that is very important both are having the same size for an example as you can see Boeing AV8B Harrier 2 so here you can see uh, that both the side we have the one forward and one after and both the wheels of same dimensions and near the wing we have two supported secondary gears the main advantage of this configuration are the design simplicity and in addition the low weight right so this landing gear configuration is very cheap for an aircraft with a narrow fuselage and mostly configured for a high wing configuration so basically they have used this aircrafts in the glider ASK21 and Lockheed U2 and many more Coming to the next is a tail gear. Tail gear landing gear is also known as a tail dragger. So tail gear landing gear has mainly two wheels, one in the forward of the aircraft center of gravity and the second one are the small wheel under the tail. As you can see uh, example of speed fire. So mostly in this case what happened the share of the main landing gear from the total load is about 80 to 90 percentage whereas the tail gear carries about 
10 to 20 percentage and one of the most risky thing in this landing gear is they have the tendency to ground loop and it has a poor visibility because of high deck angle but still it has been used for many fighter aircrafts like a tiger moth chesna aircraft you can see in the figure as a wonderful view of the chesna 185 then next is a tricycle it is the most widely and commonly used in all the general aircrafts which has a good capability of ground control during crosswind and also having the good visibility because of low deck angle unlike tail dragger so it shares the main landing gear from the total load is about 80 to 90 percentage of the total load and the nose gear carries around 10 to 20 percentage now most of these configurations are dominant in general aircraft like transport fighter and uh, one of the most disadvantage in this configuration is the nose wheel retraction can be a challenge because of its limited space and this mechanism steering mechanism a bit complex to design so mostly these tricycles are observed in Boeing 737, Airbus 320, even uh, fighter aircrafts like Fighter Falcon F-16, right? So many like MiG-29, etc. Quadricycle, as the name implies, a quadricycle landing gear utilizes four landing gears. Uh, similar to the conventional car wheel system so here in this uh, quadricycle two wheels at each side with which two wheels in front of the aircraft center of gravity and two other aft of the center of gravity the loads acting on each gear depends on its distance to the center of gravity and this quadricycle features enables the aircraft to have a low floor which permits easy loading and unloading for an example boeing 552 is utilize a quadricycle landing gear coming to this the multi bogey as the name represents that as the aircraft gets heavier the number of gears need to be increased a landing gear configuration with the multi gears more than four wheels are also helps to improve the takeoff and landing safety so most of this multi bogey are been seen in boeing 747 airbus a380 utility of this landing gear only to resist the load during landing and takeoff due to the safety point of view then releasable rail for those aircraft which are designed to take off with an airborne but not to expect to land on the ground or sea so there are some special types of gear is a releasable rail so uh, mostly such kind of things are used in rocket and missile launching category uh, these vehicles are either launched or released to get airborne and the last is a skid and floaters so mostly uh, some vertical takeoff and landing aircrafts like helicopters they don't need to taxi on the ground so they are equipped to be a uh, like beam like structure referred as skid so instead of the aircraft or the launchers they are using a skid for the vertical takeoff and landing which can resist the entire load now in case of floaters a floater plane is a type of seaplane in which one or more slender floaters mounted under the fuselage to provide buoyancy. Now, these floaters have a features a keel, a support structure which run down the center line of the bottom of the floaters. Now, the design of floaters has an important variable in designing the fuselage bottom shape is a water line as a V-shaped structure's height, which also known as a date rise angle. Now, this date rise angle need to be increased as a higher the landing speed. Basically, it is a 40 degree of angle for the better cut through the water waves. To reduce the water spray or the spray strips may be applied to the edges to the bottom line to avoid spilling of water into the engine. 
in order to select the best landing gear configuration the designer must perform a trade study based on the comparative data study as our comparative data study says that most of the configurations are configured with multi bogey so here in my design i'll be choosing a multi bogey configuration for my aircraft now a few main alternatives for attachment between the landing gear and the aircrafts are also important like where it, whether it will be attached to the fuselage or the wing or it will be attached with the main tail gears or the nose gears okay so when the fuselage is not wide enough to allow the long track wheel the attachment to the wing will be provided a good solution however in case of high wing configuration like cargo aircraft or sea plane etc the attachment of the landing gears to be the in the wing which makes the landing gear long and heavy as well as a retraction system becomes complicated so for the better solution the aircraft for the narrow fuselage will be accommodated on the specially bay of landing gear retracted storage in the fuselage to be advisable coming back to this landing gear geometry now designer need to perform mathematical calculations to determine few parameters such as height wheel base and wheel track so first we'll see the landing gear height is the distance between the lowest point of the landing gear that is bottom of the tire and attachment point to the aircraft now the attachment to the it can be of fuselage or the wing so there are mainly of five basic design requirements in landing gear height plays a very important role it helps to create or provide the aircraft clearance during taxi landing gear height also provide rear fuselage clearance during takeoff rotation third landing gear helps to contribute to tip back prevention fourth landing gear height contribute to overturn prevention and the fifth one is landing gear height satisfied loading and unloading requirements so these are the five important reason that we have to clearly decide or design the landing gear height so the distance between the main gear to the secondary gear from the side view as you can see this figure from the side view from this is the main gear this is the main gear and this is the secondary here the distance between this is the wheel base then wheel track is a distance between the two main wheel gear from the front view that is these are the main wheel main uh, landing gear the distance between this two is called as the wheel track so based on your literature study you can get the parameters and uh, as per the optimization i have got my i have plotted the graph between the number of passengers versus my track wheel track so why i have used the number of passengers because uh, here the uh, landing gear plays a very important role with respect to the number of passengers or the amount of passengers loaded in the aircraft so that's why here i have plotted a graph between the number of passengers versus the track so my number of passenger is 440 right so here are the scattered points here is my uh, here is my optimum circle so from my 440 i i have just found my track wheel around 11 meter similar fashion i have found uh, the wheel base here also have plotted between the number of passengers of my aircraft versus the num the wheel base so here are the scattered points for various aircrafts which i have chosen for my historical data so i uh, here i have got my wheel base around 25.5 right now based on this particular formula turn radius based on this geometrical formation of this wheel so we get as uh, h equals to uh, wheel base by tan theta tan theta is the turning radius where i have just substituted in this formula the tan theta equals to 2 into wheel base by wheel track we know both the values so i got my theta around 77.84 degree so this is about uh, 77.84 degree right so from here i will find my distance of turning center that means this distance 
is about 5.5 meter from here again i will substitute back to this turning radius of uh, based on the wheel base and the distance to turning center where i get my turning center to be as 26.1 meter right so based on this basic formula you can find your those important parameters that is turning center turning radius and wheel track base now one of the prime function of landing gear is to protect the aircraft structure from the ground now this job is to perform by providing a clearance with the ground the clearance is measured from the lowest point of the aircraft to the ground in some aircrafts the lowest component is a wing while some aircrafts it is a fuselage for high wing configuration and in other cases the jet engine is a lowest height from the ground for in case of transport aircraft with the engine overhanging underneath the lower wing so based on the type of aircrafts it will vary aircraft to aircraft now based on the far regulation here are the few clearance data chart that is from if the components are in the fuselage rear fuselage wing turbofan turbojets propeller in the case of propeller we have to consider the distance from the propeller ground to the propeller tip so based on that you can find the clearance parameters from this chart so since in my design the nearest or the closest value is turbofan or turbojet i will consider my clearance to be as 1 meter coming to the most important parameter is the selection of tires for the airplane involved to determine the type of tires size wheel and brake the tires are sized to carry the weight of the aircraft typically the main tires carries 90% of the total weight of the aircraft whereas the secondary tires carries 10% of the static load but experience higher in the dynamic load during landing okay so so basically this uh type of tires can be find from the tire rim association using this website www.goodyearsaviation.com hyphen resource once you go to this you can find there is an aircraft tire structures and its dimension based on the type of aircrafts used for your aircraft you can pick the right one for your aircraft keep in mind this nose tire can be assumed to be 60 to 100 percentage the size of the main tires whereas the front tires of bicycle or the quadricycle okay usually are the same as the main tires that means 100 percentage in case of tail gear or tail dragger of tires of about quarter to one third of the size of the main tires this is these are the design thumb rule for selecting your tires for your design aircraft and the last is the applications of shock absorbers for various aircraft now uh, the shock absorbers plays a very important role because it absorbs the entire shock when it is been landed in the phase of landing so based on however the mod all the modern transport aircrafts and the military fighter aircrafts they use audio shock stirred as you can see boeing 737 boeing 767 airbus fighters and all the light aircrafts like cessna 172 so all the small aircrafts or light vehicle aircrafts they use a solid spring so based on the type of your aircraft you can select the shock absorber the appropriate shock absorber for your aircraft so at the finally you need to tabulate your selected parameters these are the basic uh, textbooks which i have used right so so i will love to hear your feedback so accordingly i can customize my teaching skills see you soon with the upcoming module with engine selection drag estimation and performance estimation of the designed aircraft so stay blessed take care thank you for watching this video